Let's have a seat. God bless you. Amen. I've not been here for a while. Amen. When, when it is summer and it is very warm, that's the best time to hold crusades abroad. When it is cold, you don't get too many people to come out. So during the summer months, the geo normally travels to our outstations. So I've been to Congo, Kinshasa. Amen. Where we held a crusade by the stadium. Then I went to the United Kingdom annual anointing service. Then from there to Canada annual anointing service. Then, then from there to Dubai anointing service. Shout hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. The the aircraft that was to take me to Dubai. I was the only black person inside the plane. <laughs> and I was the only one police stopped. <laughs> you know, Nigerians, anytime they see the green passport, everybody is uh, very aggressive. <clears throat> so they stopped me and said, where are you going? So I'm going to Dubai. To do what? So I'm a pastor. I'm going for a church program. So, ah, is that so? <clears throat> Where are you getting the money to fly about? <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. That is what we face overseas sometimes. I've, I, somebody has stopped me abroad before, an immigration officer, and said, What are you going to do? I said, I'm a pastor. He said, Is that so? He said, Okay, if you're a pastor, read John 3 16. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. It, it's not their fault. It's because some Nigerians who come there and you say, I'm a bishop. They say, Okay, bishop. John 3 16, he does not know. Meaning that he's not a bishop or he's a bookshop. <laughs> Amen. Where do you get the money to fly? I say, My money. <laughs> so, but you say you're a pastor. Pastors are not supposed to have plenty of money. I said, I write books, and I sell books. It's so, okay. Um, give us the name of one of your books. I said, prayer in. Before I could say Jesus is Lord, I had brought out his computer to check whether what I was saying was true. Me, I've never goggled prayer in before. He, he goggled prayer in. When the thing came out like this, and he saw it. He looked at my passport again. <laughs> he looked at what was on his computer. He said, please, sir, sit down. <laughs> Amen. Shout hallelujah. Let's leave that one for now. <laughs> Let's go to our topic for today. Praise the Lord. I want to begin to take you, anytime I come here now, I want to begin to take you into what I call the school of mysteries. The earlier you begin to understand the mysteries of life, the better for you. I want to start taking you small, small, not too hard, into the school of mysteries. And we're starting one today. And what we are discussing today is, who are you? Who are you? Or if you like, who am I? Amen. You may think you know. But let's go on. In John chapter 1, the gospel according to St. John chapter 1. Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 1. Who are you? John chapter 1, I begin, I begin to read from verse 19. You will do your, your destiny a lot of favor by listening, listening very, very attentively 
to what I'm going to say today. Please listen carefully. Be an aggressive listener. John chapter 1 verse 19. If you are there, say yes. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? What did they go to ask him? They said, Who are you? They said, Who are you? And he confessed and denied not. And, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then art thou, Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? Please, are you following me? They are asking the deepest, the deepest question. Anybody can ask a human being, Who are you? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord as said prophet Isaiah. The man knew who he was. Say, I am a voice. And they which were sent were the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest why baptize thou then, if thou be not Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. But there sounded one among you whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me. Whose shoes lasheth I'm not worthy to unloose. John the Baptist, a wonderful person, the first prophet to appear after 400 years of silence. When he came and he began to behave strangely and he began to do powerful things, they came to me and said, Excuse me, sir. Who are you? Identify yourself. Are you Elijah? He said, No, I'm not. Are you that prophet? No, I'm not. Are you Christ? He said, No, I'm not. Then who are you? He said, I am the voice of one that cried in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. He knew who he was. One question you need to answer <laughs> as early as possible in your life is who are you? In Matthew chapter 16 Matthew chapter 16 verse 13 Matthew 16 13 Matthew 16 13 When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi Are you, not, are you there? Okay he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. There are five questions of destiny that everybody must answer if you must succeed. Five deep questions of destiny that you must answer if you must be a success in life. The first question is, who am I? Who am I? Who am I is a question of identity. What is the first question, beloved? How many questions of destiny do you need to answer? What is the first one? And who am I? It's a question of what? Identity. Two. Where am I from? Where do I come from? That's the second question you should ask. And that is a question of heritage or inheritance. Where do I come from? Where am I from? So when people are traveling abroad and they say, please, so as we are going, remember the son of whom you are. <laughs> I tell you, remember that your family is still soaking Gary here. Remember 
that we are still living in room and parlor here. Remember that we all struggle to put this money together that reminding you about your heritage. I'm praying for somebody here. Every heritage of poverty shall be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Let your amen roar like thunder. The third question is, why am I here? Why am I here? Why am I here is a question of purpose. Purpose. Why am I here? It's a question of sub purpose. Four. What can I do? That's the fourth question. What can I do? I'm here. Yes, fine. I've been born. I'm here. What can I do? What can I do? It's a question of potential. A question of what? Potential. And five, where am I going? Where am I going is a question of destiny. Five questions to answer. Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? What can I do? Where am I going? Can I have you send those five questions? What are they? Number one? Two? Three, four, five. If you are not able to answer that question, then your life becomes like our primary school poem. Solomon Grundy. Born on Monday. Christian on Tuesday. Married on Wednesday. Then took ill Thursday. It got worse. Then died on buried on. Then the writer said, this is the end of Solomon Grundy. You will not be a Solomon Grundy in Jesus' name. A correct definition of who you are will lead to a correct evaluation of your ability. When you can define yourself, who you really are, then you'll be able to evaluate what you can do. But a wrong definition of who you are will lead to incorrect assessment of your personality. This is a serious matter. Until you know your spiritual name, you cannot see your spiritual aims. Because you don't really know who you are. So no aim, nothing to aim at. And who is it that can give you the correct definition of who you are? Your correct and exact definition can only be received from the manufacturer of you, who is God. God is the manufacturer. No one can explain or interpret a product better than the one who manufactured it. I'm holding a microphone here. You can't explain this microphone better than the manufacturer. He manufactured it, so he, he knew what he put together. So, the correct, exact definition of yourself can only be supplied by your manufacturer, who is God. That's why when you are an enemy of God, you are at a great deficit. Because there are so many things you should know, you will not know. I know that for anyone here this morning, it's never too late to be what you might have been. It's never too late to become what God wants you to become. Unfortunately, most people go to the grave with their music in them. They are buried with their music. I was sharing at the headquarters on Wednesday that I read an article. I was so sad. The article said only maybe about 3% of gifted children ever fulfill their potential. I'm not talking about everybody, just gifted people. Those who are highly talented, only 3% fulfill their potential. If I give you 1,000 naira, or if I give you 1,000, and I give somebody 5,000, 
and I give somebody 3,000. Somebody is having 1,000. Another person is having 3,000. Another person is having 5,000. That thing that I give to you, the value of what is in your hand depends on where you put your dot. If I give you 5,000, 5,000, and you decide to move your dot behind 50, you have reduced the 5,000 I gave to you to 50. But if the fellow that I gave 1,000 decided to add an extra zero at the back of his uh, 1,000, it becomes what? 10,000. So it's not what you have that is really important. It's the value you add to it. It's where you move your dot. Let people move their dot and reduce their value. The purpose of this message is to show you that you are here for a specific thing. And you should be able to identify who you are. That's why one of the greatest prayer points in all the books of Mountain of Fire, one of the, if you ask for my opinion, one of the greatest prayer points in history is this one I'm going to tell you now. There are many great prayers in the Bible. For example, <laughs> uh, Oh God, arise and let your enemies be scattered. It's one of the greatest prayers in the Bible. This one is one of the greatest prayers you can ever pray for your destiny. It's Oh Lord, show me myself. Show me myself. Oh, oh, oh Lord, show me the secrets of my life. Oh Lord, show me myself. Oh Lord, show me the secrets of my life. Oh, these prayers are powerful prayer points. Powerful destiny changing prayer points. Powerful life changing prayer points. If you have not prayed them, it is possible that you don't even know who you are. Oh Lord, show me myself. Oh Lord, show me the secrets of my life. There could be secrets that your parents are hiding from you. You don't know. But, when you begin to pray, God shows it to you. And without you knowing that secret, your life may just be a waste. Oh Lord, show me the secrets of my life. Oh Lord, show me myself. You see, there are prayers and there are prayers. There are prayers that will bring everyone down. There are prayers that will bring nothing down. There are prayers that will bring testimony to people. I had a brother, 1995, at this headquarters. He had BSc in economics first class. He has masters in business administration. He had distinction. But no job. Everywhere he went, they would say, well, you are the best for this job, but something tells us not to give it to you. He will go to interview, he will be number one, they will take number two. And when he goes back, he says, I, I, I came to check for the interview, I did there. Yeah. I say, well, you did very well, but what? He just decided to take the second person. So he was being pursued by this spirit of failure. Then he had me preach a message similar to the one you are hearing now. <laughs> Worry people say, pick away, no go sleep. People pick away, say, my man, no go sleep. Himself, no go sleep. Huh? Say, Macbeth shall sleep no more because Macbeth has trouble sleep. 1 a.m. He started prayer. Serious prayer. One prayer point. Oh Lord, show me the secrets of my life. Oh Lord, show me the secrets of my life. He prayed. He prayed until fellow tenants were knocking his door. Let us sleep. Please. As he prayed, all of a sudden, he saw a black pot. I said, I'm taking you to the school of mysteries. He saw a black pot. He continued praying. The black pot disappeared. After some time again, after one hour of prayer, black pot appeared. So he came back to me and said, Gio, I'm praying, but when I started this prayer, oh God showed me secret. I'm seeing a black pot. Gio, what is this black pot? And I said, okay. I, I prayed. He said, you have to go home. There is a pot dedicated to you. Locate the pot. Destroy it. Say, pot? I've not been to my village for 17 years. And you have to go now. So he went to the village. He didn't normally visit, visit the village, but he got there and saw his parents. They were old people. Ah! Welcome. 
Lagos boy. Welcome. What the, what what uh, uh, why, why did you suddenly come home? So, so I came home because I just want to see your faces and say hello to you. And he was playing with them, playing with them, playing with them. After some time, he just brought out a question out of the blue and said, Mommy, eh, do I have a pot? I do must say yes. Yes, our three children, they have pots. So in, in our family, when we give birth to children, we give them a pot. And when we scrape their ear, the first ear we take from their ear, we put it in the pot and bury it. Uh, the pots are at the back. Your sister own is there. Your brother own is there. Your own two is there. And those two people they mentioned, they are all abroad. They are not doing well at all. And the now said, eh, Mommy, let me see the pot. So Mama took Karemun to the backyard. And they got to the backyard. He didn't know which one was his own because there are three. He said, Mommy, <laughs> which one? <laughs> which one is my own? <laughs> he said, that one over there. He said, yeah, hey, okay. He said, but don't touch it. You're not supposed to touch it. Don't touch. And I said, okay. He looked at them. Left, left right. Hold. <laughs> he carried the pot. He carried the pot. Before they could say, Jesus is Lord, he ran out. They, they were old people. They couldn't run after him. He ran straight to the motor park. Where the man was saying, Lagos, three passengers. Lagos, three passengers. He sat down and said, I will pay for the extra passenger. Just go. Leave this place. He brought the pot to the headquarters. Beloved, inside the pot, there was still his ear that was caught as a baby. Inside that pot. We destroyed the pot. We anointed the pot, destroyed the pot, set it ablaze. Within 48 hours, he got a job. In an oil company. After he had prayed to know the secret, can you raise up your right hand to the devil and say, My father! Show me the secrets of my life! In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and declare. There is somebody who should pray this prayer loud. In Jesus' name we pray. Silence. Don't open your eyes. Silence. Don't open your eyes. Just remain standing. Those of you are standing. Don't open your eyes. Silence. The Lord is causing deliverance to happen in the life of seven persons whose placenta has been misused by their parents to control their destiny. The power of God is coming upon you where you are. And that yoke is broken completely now. That's the first person. That's number two. That's number three. Yes, you must be released. That's number four. That's number five. Release the placenta. Release the placenta. Release the placenta. That's number six. That's number seven. Raise your right hand again and shout this loud and clear. God Allah Show me beneficial secrets that will move my life forward in the name of Jesus Beneficial secrets Basante Katela Kayaba Jesus' name we pray. Sit down for a little bit. 
Please, if you are following me, say yes. I want you to understand this message, Joe. Because it's a very serious matter. As I'm taking, as I'm taking to the school of mysteries. I know that you are a Nigerian. I know that we are in Nigeria. But you don't have to allow the spirit of Nigeria to cage you. Men are developing aircrafts. We are developing witchcraft. Both of them are craft, craft. We. An old woman was found on top of Nepal wire in the morning, CCM, hanging there. I said, Mama, how are you doing that place? Say, I'm a witch. I was flying and the foil finished. The people did not bring her down. They used stone to, to bring her down. That's the environment where we are. I was reading a joke written by somebody. The person, you know, in September 9-11 in America, they flew plane into some building and destroyed life and destroyed property. Somebody said, that kind of thing can never happen in Nigeria. He said, why? He said, because the Nigerian plane will be delayed. The plane will never leave on time. And then, those fire people, because a lot of people who, who are firemen died in that thing. Say so in Nigeria, no single fireman will die in that place. Say so because when you find they will say there is no water inside the so they won't even come. We need to break free from that hold and move on to excellence. I remember another sister, she was thirty nine years old. At thirty nine, she was a virgin. Not only a virgin, nobody has ever said I love you. To her at thirty nine. Beautiful woman, but nobody has ever said I love you. The same prayer she prayed, Father, show me the secrets of my life. How can I be a first class material, but I'm in third class? I want to know the secrets. Those are the things I'm talking about today, this morning. That's what you should know who you are. Show me the secrets of my life. And the principle of scripture is very simple. Whosoever asks, receives. That's the principle. If you don't ask, hmm? you are not interested in the information. Hmm? She prayed and she just had a dream. She saw herself at a wedding ceremony, dressed in a wedding gown. And somebody said, look at the face of your husband. When she looked at the face of the husband, it was her father. She said, daddy, you can't marry me now. How are you, are you dressing like this? You're supposed to hand me over to who I will marry. I said, no. Uh, 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 let, it, let it be so. And the funny pastor in that dream was doing the wedding. And say, I will be, beloved, these two are gathered here. And the man went on until the sister woke up. She said, ah, what kind of strange dream is this? She came running to me and said, Jew, ah, strange dream. I said, go to your daddy and ask question. So she went to the daddy. And the man said, well, you see, uh, since your mother died, there is nobody to look after me. Uh, nobody to cook. Nobody so... I've converted you to both wife, both wife and mother. So, our own father had married her off in the spirit realm. And she did not know. When prayers get to a level, everything in this world has levels. So, when prayers get to a level, some secrets, deep secrets will be revealed to you. And the more you pray, the more you discover and the more you discover, the more you recover. And the more you recover, the faster you fulfill your destiny. So everything is praying the correct prayer. So today is a day to cry to heavens. Cry really to heavens. Let me ask you a few questions. Do you really know who you are? Do you really know? The Bible says, you shall know the truth. And the truth you know is the one that will set you free. Not the one you don't know. Do you really understand yourself? Do you really understand yourself? Of late now, we have different daddies sleeping with their daughters. Do you re- if you are sleeping with your daddy, do you really understand yourself, who you are? It's a tragedy when the enemy knows who you are, but you yourself, you don't know. 
It's a tragedy when the enemy sees you and they are running, but you too are running away from the enemy. Do you really know who you are? There was a brother who was having so much problem, and because he was having so much problem, he decided that he was not going to serve Jesus again. He was going to go to a native doctor. So his friend took him to a native doctor. His friend in church took him to a native doctor. If you are looking for somebody in church, you will take you to a native doctor, you will find. His friend in church took him to a native doctor. When they got to the native doctor, the native doctor said, excuse me, he called his friend and said, why did you bring this man here? Say, he's my friend, Baba. He needs help. Say, your friend needs help? Say, no, don't you see him? He has that thing. That thing is in him. Say, those who have that thing, they don't come here. My, his friend said, but what thing, Baba? I say, hi, you're a small boy. He has that thing. Don't bring him here. If, if, if he enters, he will spoil my juju. Don't bring him here. He will spoil our medicine here. Don't bring him here. The boy said, but I brought him here. Baba. I cannot tell him to go. Will you go and tell him yourself? <laughs> so the native doctor went to this brother and said, hey, listen, my son, you have that thing. Those of you who have that thing, you don't come here. The place where you receive that thing is enough to solve any problem that you have. Go back to the place where you receive that thing. So the native doctor could see the Holy Spirit in him. He could see the power in him. But he himself is not aware. It's a tragedy when you are strong and you don't know. It's a tragedy when there is a deposit of God in your life and you are completely unaware. It's a tragedy when you carry a golden coin in your hand and you sell it cheaply away without your knowledge. I've seen some people who follow their friends to native doctors and when they got there, the native doctor didn't talk to their friends, was talking to them. There was one particular woman, the woman is in headquarters now. She followed her friend to the native doctor and the native doctor began to smile at her. Smile like that. One day, sheepy shirt. Mugu smile like that. Smiling like that. My mother said, Baba, why are you smiling at me like that? My mother said, Ah, you are such a wonderful woman. You have plenty of virtues in your hand. In fact, you have seven. Can you give me some? And the woman didn't take it seriously. Say, yes, Baba. How many do you want? I said, give me four. It's okay. Bring your head close. And the man slapped her head. She didn't know what the man had done. Her virtues were gathered. She went from grace to grass. It's a tragedy when the enemy knows you, but you do not know yourself. This is a day to cry out like a wounded lion. Not only here, when you get to 12 midnight, stand up. Even if it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, God is happy. If you stand on your feet and you do 10 minutes of hot praying and go and sleep. Instead of saying, I will have an IVG. I will have an IVG. I have an IVG. No. No. You should cry to the Lord like a wounded lion. Say, oh Lord, show me who I am. Show me who I am. How do you expect to understand others when you don't even understand yourself? Don't understand who you are. Say, oh Lord, show me beneficial secrets of my life. You need to pray that prayer. If your name were to be entered into the dictionary of heaven, how will you define yourself? You should ask yourself deep, deep question. Who is my real father? <laughs> Who is my real mother? Who is my real wife? Who is my real friend? Who are my relations? Don't be too surprised that there are many people who were conceived by a spirit husband. But it's true that your father was sleeping with your mother. But what conceived you was not spam from your father. It was spam from spirit husband. It is possible. I've seen that before. And I've shared it with you here before. That lady that I saw for the first time in my life as a minister, I saw a lady having both male and female organ. She had a penis, she had a vagina, two together. Long penis.
In fact, when she was uh, when she was explaining to me, I, when she found I was finding it difficult to understand, she pulled down her skirts in my office. I said, wait, 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 wait. And she told me strange stories. I felt sorry for her. Strange stories. Were you born like this? He said, no. He said, no. That immediately somebody proposed marriage to her. Then this extra one began to grow. I said, ah, ah. He said, ah, ah. He said, one day, sir. Ham robbers came to our house. Ham robbers came to our house. Why, why are you laughing? So after the ham robbers have taken everything they wanted to take, the man said, hey, you're a beautiful girl here. Lie, lie down, remove your skirt. So she was there, please leave me alone, you can take anything. So when the arm robbers came close to her with a gun on her head, and pulled down her skirt, and saw both male and female organ. The arm robber forgot his gun in the house, ran. She traveled to England to do a surgery because there are some surgeons can remove the male one. She traveled to England to do a surgery. I'm telling you about mysteries of life. She traveled to England to do a surgery. And uh, the, uh, the white doctor was supposed to be an expert at removing, at converting sex. So uh, the white man said, okay, how are you today, young lady? So I said, you lie on this bed for me. Let me examine you. And when, the, when she pulled on her clothes, by the time the white man will see it, the penis had disappeared. The man did not see the penis. Said, ah, excuse me, young lady, you said I see penis here. Eh? Say yes, sir. Say it's no longer here. And she felt it. Said, ah, it disappeared. It was strange. So the white man now began to recommend psychiatric drugs. She thought she, he thought she was mad. By the time she left the place, got into the train. To go back home, the thing, the thing was back there again. The same prayer that I said she go and pray. Now, what, what she prayed? Lord, show me the secrets of my life. And God opened her eyes. She saw her father sleeping with her mother, but as an extra man also sleeping with the woman. Two men on the same woman. It was then she understood that it was the second man that conceived her, not her own father. Secrets of life. Raise up your right hand again. My father, show me the secrets of my life in the name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray keep your eyes closed the Lord wants to deliver some people again this people is your ear that was used to manipulate your destiny your ear your ear so right there where you are there is liquid fire from heaven falling upon your head and that liquid fire will remove from your head all the evil hands laid on your head to suppress you As the first person. That's the second person. Yes. That which was done against your head as a baby. The power of God is coming upon that head. 
some of them is up over there. Thank you, Jesus. Sit down, beloved. Are you following me? If you are understanding me, say yes. I had another case. This sister had life really, really rough. Even with a PhD, she had life really, really rough. How can a PhD holder be borrowing money from cleaners? She's borrowing money from the cleaner in her office. And she's this boss. Was that terrible? Everything she tried never worked. She now began to look for solution. Look for solution. Then a friend of her took her to a lame native doctor. That native doctor was a cripple. And the friend said, this native doctor is very powerful. It will help you. So the native doctor, a cripple man, looking at this beautiful PhD woman, asked her friend to go out. The friend went out. And the native doctor said, well, for you to succeed, I must sleep with you. She said, no, sir. I, I'm, I'm not interested. I want to go. So she called her friend and said, this is what this Baba is saying. I don't, I, what, is this the kind of place you are bringing me? I'm going away. Her friend began to beg her to do it. She said, are you not tired of this kind of life? Are you not tired with what you are going through here? Are you not tired with this? You know, cooperate with the man. She this just once. Then after that one, you start enjoying your life. Nobody will write it on your face that you slept with a native doctor. You just go on with what you want to do. She affirmed, persuaded her, begged her, and you know she agreed. She agreed. So she now she laid, she removed her clothes, laid on the bed, waiting for the man to come. The man now came. The man was uh, under the bed there. He's one of those people who cannot produ- pronounce arrow very well. I said, uh, carry me. Carry me up. When she now had carry me, she said, hey, insult upon injury. I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing to sleep with you. And I said, I should carry him on, on my own head. She now stood up, dressed up, and said, if I perish, I perish. I'm not interested. That's what brought her to the mountain of fire. The same prayer. Lord, show me the secrets of my life was what she prayed. And any time she prayed it, she saw an egg. An egg suspended. She came back and said, You what they say when I pray, see, yes, I see the used string to tie an egg to the roof. So what does that mean? I said, Go and ask your mother. She went to the mother, said, Mommy, has anything ever been done against me with an egg? Uh, the mommy said, no, nothing was done against you with an egg. So, but I used to miscarry. I used to miscarry. Because of miscarriage, I went to the chief doctor. The chief doctor now brought out an egg and suspended the egg in the ceiling. I said, as far as that egg is in the ceiling, you will not miscarry. Say, anytime labor starts, come here, then we will cut the egg down. She now came back and said, this is what mommy said. Mommy said, because she was miscarrying, the egg was suspended on the roof. And I said, ah, madam, your life is an egg. Now, now that we know what happened, we prayed specific prayers. It was then a problem solver. She's not a professor. That woman is not a professor. A professor of French language. Now, but if not for that prayer, to locate the secret and deal with it, which, 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 in spiritual warfare, we call identify, locate, and destroy. What did I say? Say it again. That's what. Yes, you identify, you locate it, and destroy it, and then things will begin to work for you. There are people here. People here. There are people here. People here. People here. In this meeting, young people who, if they pray this prayer, and they are able to know the secret. Sky is the limit. But if they don't know, the ignorance will destroy. What I'm talking to you now is not a, 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 a psychedelic prayer. Ah, good God. 
God, God, God. I, 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 I want to experience your power. And yeah, you experience the power of God. You are going to experience. It won't work. It won't work. Let me tell you the truth. It won't work. It won't work. Because the preacher himself needs to pray his own prayer. I want you to understand this very well. I had another case. Listen to me. <laughs> I had another case. This sister, anytime she gets pregnant, they will take a scan at six months. Seven months, baby disappears. No, 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 nothing, no trace. The scan will show zero. Womb is empty. <laughs> what kind of thing is this one again? Get pregnant, six, six, six months, they take a scan, they see the baby, sometimes they see twins, seven months, womb is clear. The doctors are confused. It got so bad that in one particular hospital, any time she was coming for a tenator clinic, the doctor will close the door quickly and say that he has malaria. Because the man too was afraid. That was what brought her to the mountain of fire. That's why I said mountain of fire and miracles ministry has been converted to an intensive care hospital for all churches. After the churches have done their dancing and their reggae and their disco and there is a problem, go to mountain of fire. So she came. Again, the same prayer. She prayed it. She prayed. And then she said, anytime she prayed, she will see a bottle turn upside down. A bottle turned upside down. She saw it several times. Several times. God is a kind God. He will always show secrets if you ask him. So she came back to me and said, Gio, bottle turned upside down. What, what is that? Why bottle? Why bottle turned upside down? I said, go and talk to your father. <laughs> go and talk to your father. She went to the father. I said, daddy, you know I've been married now for 10 years. And this is the situation. Do you remember anything concerning me about bottle? Hey, the man said, Yes, oh, ha, ah, holy me, oh, hey. He said, Daddy, why, why are you reacting? The man said, When, because you're a beautiful little girl, I didn't want them to get you pregnant in school. So I now went to a native doctor who gave me a bottle that as far as I turn the bottle upside down under the bed, no matter what volume of spam they put in your body, it will run out. You, you, you won't get pregnant. And that, ah, ah. See, and the native doctor told, told the, the father that any time the daughter wants to get married, he should come so that they can reverse that thing. But the man had forgotten. He had forgotten. So he quickly ran. Under his bed, the bottle was still there, upside down, with dust. So, Daddy, what do we do now? The Baba now started crying. He cried. He said, Daddy, why are you crying? Let's let's go to the native doctor. Why are you crying? I said, I'm crying because the native doctor is dead. But now, we in Mountain of Fire, we know what to do now. She brought the bottle. And we spoke to the bottle, anointed it, and destroyed it. That's how she got pregnant and had the baby. I'm praying for somebody here. Every secret that we need to know to move your life forward, receive it now. Receive it. 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 In the name of Jesus. Sit down for a little bit. Perhaps right now, even as a young person. You are tired of your situation. Perhaps, even as a young person, you are overwhelmed by many challenges that are coming your way. Perhaps, even as a young person, you have chronic financial problems. Perhaps, as a young person, you have lost touch with yourself. You are, you are getting to the brink of committing suicide. Perhaps, as a young person, you have even seen yourself as almost a total stranger to yourself. Even a total stranger to others. Perhaps you have even tried to kill yourself. 
But when you saw that it was difficult to die, you stopped. Perhaps. Perhaps. I see a woman who came to me and said, Hey, let's see, I Jew. I tried to commit suicide. I said, What did you do? He said, I drank a glass of kerosene. So, you don't want to commit suicide now, huh? Don't you have battery chargers? Battery chargers, just it. If you really want to die, you go and buy acid now, huh? You have kerosene. You want to die, don't drink kerosene. You drink acid. I say, madam, you don't want to die. Let's face back. Huh? <laughs> a pastor friend of mine come and say, hey, Gio, come, 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 come. That his son wanted to commit suicide. His son wanted to commit suicide. Uh, the man, the, the boy, I got there. The boy that they say want to commit suicide, he's tying the rope on the waist. I said, it's a lie. He, he doesn't want to die. <laughs> if he wants to die, it is not the waist. They put the rope, it's on the neck. Perhaps you are under high tension wire now. This singular prayer may bail you out. Apart from the prayer we are praying here, when you get home tonight, 12 midnight, stand on your feet. 10 minutes is enough. Don't plan for a long time. It's not the kind of prayer you pray and you are dozing. No, no. 10 hot minutes. Go and sleep. See what will happen. And if you, when you begin to receive revelation, if it's not clear, write it in a letter. Give it to your pastor. Side. They'll give it to me. I'll, I'll get back to you. Make sure your phone number is there. If you receive revelation, it's not clear to you. Write it down. When it gets to me, it will be clear. <laughs> write it down. Now, life itself is a mystery. And we cannot fully comprehend life here on earth. We cannot fully comprehend life here on earth. It's, it's a mystery that you can't comprehend it fully. So that's why you need to pray the prayer. Oh Lord, show me the secret of my life. God himself is a secret keeper. Deuteronomy 29.29 says, secret Things belong unto the Lord our God. Deuteronomy 29 29. What's that passage? Deuteronomy, what? Never forget that passage. It's easy to remember. Deuteronomy 29 29. Secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Daniel 2 22 says, He knows the deep and secret things, He knows what is in darkness. Psalm 25 14 says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him. So God knows all things and is able to reveal secrets to us if we ask him. Jacob knew that his life was not blessed. He knew that he was not in a place of blessing. He knew that life, his life was in a mess. And he didn't like the mess. One night he had an opportunity. He saw an angel and for seven hours he held tight and said, Unless thou bless me, I will not let thee go. Let me go, Jacob said, no, unless thou bless me, I will not let thee go. And the battle continued for seven hours. After seven hours, the angel said, what is thy name? So for the first time, the secret of Jacob's trouble was what? His name. His name. Say, henceforth, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. So, that singular change of name made him to fulfill his destiny and change his life forever. Some of us may need to examine our name depending on what God tells you. Examine that name. Why are you bearing that name? You don't just bear any name. Do you just see one name in a book without bearing it? Like, I, like I, some of whom might have had me sharing this. I was talking to that lady. They said, my name is Belinda. I'm Belinda. Belinda. Belinda means beautiful snake. Belinda. But she didn't know. That was the meaning of her name. A beautiful snake. The major problem, listen to me, Kelly, with many people is that they do not know what is troubling them. They don't know. 
they can't do spiritual sharp shooting because they don't know what to shoot. This is when you see something, you start shooting, you don't even know what to shoot because you've never asked person. Some breakthroughs will not come unless you know who you are. Unless you know who you are. And I pray that the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. We had a pastor's wife. Unfortunately, the pastor's wife is dead now. Because she didn't talk on time. Problems started in her life. The first breast developed cancer, they, call it, they cut it off. Second breast developed cancer, they cut it off. It, and she prayed and prayed and prayed. It was, then the, it was when the two breasts had been cut off, they brought her to me. I said, Madam, okay, pray this prayer. Lord, show me the secrets. Why am I going through this? I'm a pastor's wife. She prayed. And came back and said, Joe, I can't believe what I'm hearing. I said, what? He said, somebody came to me in the dream and said, your father is not your father. I said, at, the, at the age of 37, my father is not my father. So she went to her, she went to her mother and said, mommy, who is my father? I said, your father is, uh, he mentioned, he said, no, that's not the one. Mommy and I said, okay, you are right. This woman, up to the time she was going to die, she thought she came from Cross River State. But as her father was Yoruba. She thought that, that what, what happened was that the mother was married at the time she quarreled with her husband and left the house. When she left the house, she now met this Yoruba man somewhere who slept with her. She got pregnant one month. She knew she was one month pregnant. They said to the quarrel, she came back home. And she did not tell her husband that she was already pregnant. So all through the age, through the age of 37, she was being fathered by the wrong man. And that affected her destiny. Because the Yoru, in the family of the Yoruba man that slept with her, cancer is the problem there. Can you raise up your right hand again? My father! Show me the secrets of my life! In the name of Jesus! Open your mouth and declare it! Show me the secrets. In Jesus' name we pray. Our time is up. I will come and continue this message another time. Because of your time. But let me just conclude what I am saying here today. And I come back and continue next time. Sisters. You really need to pray this prayer harder than the men. What did I say, sisters? <laughs> harder. Harder than the men. Because evil spirits have a lot of interest in women. Did you hear what I just said? Evil spirits have a lot of interest in women. That's why the Bible says some strange angels were getting married to the daughters of men. If we read Genesis chapter 6. Right. They have lots of interest. In women. And the devil hates women. With perfect hatred. Ah. Devil hates women. With perfect. Perfect hatred. And the devil can go to any level. To target a woman. Satan, Satan targeted when Satan got to the garden of Eden he didn't go to Adam just went straight for the woman he targeted women in the garden of Eden because uh, he knew that once he could capture that woman he would capture the world so any woman who is becoming spiritually serious gives Satan nightmares nightmares because you know that that woman that is becoming spiritually serious, when she has a child, she will make the child serious too. And then she will, when she cooks, she will pray. The woman is in charge of the womb. The woman is in charge of the cradle. The woman is in charge of the kitchen. The devil knows that one very well. So he, fight, he gives them a hard fight. That's why any woman that is befriending the devil, you are befriending your enemy. Because he hates women 
with perfect interest. Satan's agenda for women is to become prostitutes and to go from man to man and to become witches and wizards and trouble the whole world. But it's you who will decide that no, I will not allow the agenda of Satan to prosper in my life. I pray for somebody here that the power that will move you from where you are to where you would like to be, where everyone wants you to be, will come upon you today. In the name of Jesus. It will come upon you in the name of Jesus. If you are here this morning, and you are not born again, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, the other prayers I'm going to ask people to pray now will not be able to work for you. And I'm here to help you. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Rise up on your feet. If you are here, you're not born again, but you know that you have issues to resolve. I don't want you to waste time because we don't have time to waste. If you are here, you say, man of God, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I know I'm not born again, but I know I need something to happen in my life quick. I, I'm just going to count 10. If by the time I count 10, you are not here, then I believe maybe you don't want to surrender your life to Jesus today. Then you leave the enemy to punish you for that. So if you know you are not born again, you want to surrender your life to Jesus, just leave your seat. Run quickly to the altar here. Jesus is waiting for you. Don't waste time. One. Two, three, I have decided four, to Jesus. five, six, seven. Party up, party up, party up, party up, party up, because we want to go and pray. of you at the altar i congratulate you you've taken the most important decision in life and, and i i praise god for your life just close your eyes bow down your head say what i'm going to say after me say father in the name of jesus i come before you now like jesus come into my life take control of my life as from today i say bye bye to the devil I enter into the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I thank you for your children here. I pray that the decision they've taken today will be permanent in their lives. You keep them standing by your power. You lay your hands upon their lives. It is well with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Those of you at the open your eyes, look at me. We have become brethren in Christ now. So please do me a favor. Immediately we close this service. Don't rush home. Just come to the front here. Because I want to take data from you so that we can, I can be praying for you by name. And then your miracles will begin to locate you. God bless us to do so. You may just go back to your sin. Immediately we close. Just find a way back here. Then uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. On the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea, on the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea. Hallelujah. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is good forevermore. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living.
Did I ask you to pray tonight? 12. Try and remain away. 12. 12 is the best time to start this kind of prayer because at 12 o'clock, a lot of spiritual transactions begin to take place. 12 midnight is the time when the spiritual entities of the day hand over their batting to that of the night and they take over the night duty. That's the best time to pray. 10 minutes is okay. 15 minutes. If you can pray for longer, pray. But don't kneel down. You will sleep off. Stay, remain on your feet. Remain on your feet. Because it's the kind of prayer the enemy does not want anybody to pray. All eyes closed. If you are here in this meeting now, and the situation you are going through now is as getting, you, is getting you crazy. Crazy. It's as if you are losing your mind. Please run quickly to the altar here and be on your knees. You are going through some situations. It's getting you really, really crazy. As if you are about to lose your mind. Find a way to this altar. Everybody will shout this loud and clear. Whether you are at the altar or not, pray with fire, pray with power. Pray with fire, pray with power. Say this loud and clear. Every manipulating my destiny. You are a liar. Die. In the name of Jesus. Something must happen to you today. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh That's better. That's better. Silence, beloved. Silence, beloved. Father, I'm praying for anyone in this meeting who is walking about, well, whose destiny has really been buried. Makapota le karebo soponja. Right there where you are. Every power that has arrested your destiny, I command them to be arrested. Let them 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 be arrested. In the name of Jesus. Aha. You, that sister over there, your parents did Olokun for you. Right there where you are, I command that spirit of Olokun to jump out of you now. In the name of Jesus. It's happening. Just be released. 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 Aha! 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 Enough is enough. Aha! Now pray this prayer with merciless 
violence. Every power that has written me off. Your time is up. Die in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I pray for all of you here at this altar. I speak unto you by the spirit of the prophet and by the spirit of prophecy that before this week runs to an end, every situation that has been punishing your life shall become testimonies. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we pray this next prayer, if you are here and you have noticed a pattern of failure in your family, you find that your father did not succeed. Your mother did not enjoy a marriage. There's a pattern that is going on. Come to the front and be on your knees and pray the way you've never prayed before. There is no point why all this evil pattern must continue. Pray the way you've never prayed before. Pray this prayer with the whole of your spirit, with the whole of your mind. As I pray, the power of God will begin to move from person to person. Shout this loud and clear. Every power that stop my parents, I stop you before you stop me. In the name of Jesus.